don't acknowledge grace, but grace is and mercy are given to us fresh every single day. Every single day. And it's because of God's grace we have made it this far. And for that, we need to say hallelujah. For that, we need to say praise God. For that, we need to say thank you, Jesus. Because that word, God's grace, is the reason why all of us are here today. Can I get a witness? Yeah. this year. Marriages happened this year. Blessings and overflow happened this year. Blessings happened this year. But we still here because of God's grace. Successful surgeries happened this year. Our babies are still here. They're intact and no harm or hurt came upon their heads in school this year. We have so much to be thankful for. Amen. So we know God is moving throughout this service. And we thank you for his presence. And as we come before you, Lord God, we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the prayers that we've prayed that you've answered. And we thank you for the prayers that we're going to pray that we know and believe with faith that you're going to answer. And God, as we go throughout this service and as we give the word that you have to on high to come before you this morning, we thank you in advance for your grace and your mercy. And we thank you for hearing your prayers that are going to be prayed. And God, we thank you for protection. God, we thank you for protection. And all other things that we have, we thank you for blessing our homes and our finances, Lord God. We thank you for blessing our mental status, Lord God. And God, we just thank you for just allowing us to breathe in and into your work and your kingdom. In your name we you pray. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, my all. God's grace. I come before you this afternoon with a quick word. And I won't stand before you long. And Sister Jackie, thank you for standing up here with me today and being here with me. She's supposed to be at work, but she's here. And I thank you for being here with me today at the Mount. There were three passages that were read for your hearing this morning. And I will go back and read just a brief excerpt from Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40, chapter, verses 10 and 11. See, the sovereign God comes with power. And he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have been. The message for this morning is God, excuse me, the message for this morning is love. God's motivation. And we know that today is the second Sunday in Advent and the candles have been lit and the readings have been read. But we know that today we're going to discuss love, God's motivation. And everything that God does is because of love. In today's society, we are connected with all types of electrical gadgets. And all of these gadgets are requiring connections and possessions and almost always requires a password. 
Letters, numbers, even symbols are being used for some of these passwords to keep our trusty gadgets secure. Oftentimes we lock our own selves out of our own trusty gadgets because we've forgotten our password. So recently at work I had the opportunity, and I call it an opportunity because when it affects me, it affects everybody. I had to change my password on my computer. I only have about four or five passwords that I use, and this time it would not let me use anything I've used in the past. And so I had to mull over and press and be like, ah, you know, this is my password, I'm going to forget it. And then I said, well, I'm going to go with a particular phrase. The phrase that I went with is one that I've been seeing for several years on cars, on wall art, on t-shirts, even bumper stickers. And the phrase is live, laugh, love. As I thought about this phrase, I had to laugh at myself because normally I use passwords that are relevant to my life. And after typing it a few times last Wednesday, I came to realize this phrase has described my whole entire year. And it was the perfect password for me to use. Live, laugh, Love. Like most, I've worked hard at trying to, one, live my life to the fullest and not let any grass grow under my feet. Mm -hmm. Two, I have tried to laugh at life's challenges, obstacles, ups, and downs this year. And thirdly, I have loved so hard to the point where I fell in love and got married. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, I can say that I've lived, I've laughed, and I've loved. But let's think back for a few moments. Are we living a life full to potential that God has given us? Are we finding joy and humor in life? Are we loving the people that God has placed in our paths for us to love? Not only this year, but just in life in general. It's not too late to start loving. It's not too late to start finding joy and humor in life. And it's not too late to start living your life. Our scripture lesson for today focuses on love, God's motivation. God is a powerful ruler. And his greatest commandment is for us to love one another. He desires for us to listen to his voice, just like any parent would. He also provides a stern teaching and at the same time give a loving, gentle correction and comfort, just like any parent would. It's because of God's love, because of his grace, and because of his mercy that he came in human form through Jesus. This morning, the primary text was Isaiah 40, chapter 11, excuse me, 10 and 11. And there's three confirmations of God tending to his children that are mentioned. The first one is, it states that he gathers the lambs in his arms. In this passage, the Lord is coming with might, and he is using a strong arm to both rule and protect his people. He feeds his flock like the shepherd would with the food of God's holy word. The arm of the Lord represents strength. Isaiah uses this as a reminder of the power of Christ's ministry being more spiritual than physical. He is also equipping us to trust in God's might. We have to trust the strength of God in our weak states. And we also have to ask the Savior to help us along the way. We might be judged by man when we ask for help, but we're never judged by God when we go to him for help. With him on our side, he has already won the victory for us on our behalf. The second thing this passage tells us 
is that we seek him for reward. The reward in him is through the repayment of blessing his children. Our rewards are the joys and the victories that he has won on our behalf. So we are able to enjoy his salvation for us. It is the holiday season and we become enthralled with purchasing gifts and wrapping gifts. But we need to seek the ultimate gift giver and continue to carry him close to our heart. That's the best reward and gift any of us could ever receive. He particularly cares for those who are hurting. He cares for those who are weak and the misfortune. He would carry them in his bosom just like he does us every day. And the last thing that the scripture gives us, the passage tell us, tells us to gently lead those that have young. Being young doesn't always necessarily have to deal with age, but it can be young for those who are young in their walk with Christ. Verse 11 tells us that the mood changes from strength to tenderness, just like a gentle shepherd. He seeks the lambs who are lost, defenseless, and he cares for them. And by this word, we know that he requires little of us and will allow no more trouble to become upon our heads. He comes gently to restore us when we're weak. He heals us when we're wounded and he lifts us in when we have those valley experiences. We should recognize and feel our brokenness and rest in the comfort of the gentleness of his arms. He wants to care for us. He wants us to come to him not necessarily always go to man, but come to him because his love is motivation. In today's scripture reading, the prophet Isaiah also tells us to prepare a way for the Lord's coming. In the Gospel of Mark, John the Baptist preaches repentance, baptizes people, and for those to prepare a way once baptized for the Holy Spirit to come in. In 2 Peter, he also tells us to prepare a way for we know not when the Lord will return. The common word is prepare. And our hearts and minds must make room for God to come in our lives. And we must prepare for him and receive all that he has to give us. Even when we don't ask and we don't deserve we need to be prepared because his love in return motivates us and we are to love mankind too. God's love is motivation. Earlier on in the message, I mentioned how my password was a reflection of my whole year. The passage reminds me that in 2017, we could not move or do anything in our lives without God's love. We're lost sheep, regardless of whether we want to know it, believe it, or not. We're all lost sheep. But it's important to allow God to come and recover us. And it's important for him to rescue us in our dire time of need, in our sickness, and in our low moments. It's important for him to come and guide us when we cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's important for him to shine a light when it seems dark, bleak, and impossible. Regardless of the obstacles that we face financially, physically, mentally, and emotionally, God's love wholeheartedly and unconditionally will be wrapped around us by his loving arms. When we're lost in the world and situations and outlooks on life seem hopeless, or what we had planned just does not come to pass. We have to continue to have that mustard seed faith. Yes. Yes. And we have to know and believe when we pray that God will make a way. Yes. We have yes. to know and believe that God will provide for yes. us. Yes. We have to know and believe it's because of his grace yes. that he yes. will direct our paths. Yes. He will comfort us. He will wipe your tears 
when it seems like all hope is gone. Yeah. He will put us in his arms. Yeah. Psalm 33 states that we wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice for we trust his holy name. God said if you just trust me. And that's what he wants us to do. And if we trust him, we know that his love is motivation. Doesn't this excite you to know that God is always there? Yes. God is always there when you call someone and they don't pick up the phone. God is waiting for you to call on him. Yes. He's our shield. Yes. He's our protector. Yes. He's our motivation. So we know that it's the power of God's love alone that we should rejoice in when nothing else matters because to God we matter every day. We're his children. We're just like the lost sheep. We matter. And if there's just one he needs to go and rescue, he will go and rescue that one. Everything is all right with God. And we just have to continue to trust him. In preparing for this message for this Advent day, I read that the lamb are like little children because they walk fast and their legs are short and they get weak. And when the flocks move and nobody's there to help them because they're lost, the shepherd would go and seek out the lost. He alone has the ability to pick up the lamb and carry them, and that's exactly what he does for us. Just imagine how comforting it must be for the weak and weary days that we have. He picks us up when we fall knowingly and unknowingly, and he carries us in the bosom of his arms next to his heart. He's there. He will gently lead those who have their young. And like the mother of the sheep, she's concerned for her lamb, just like our parents are and were concerned for us. And if the shepherd picks up her lambs and carries the lamb in his arm, the mother sheep closely follows by. She would not be afraid of her lamb because she knows the shepherd has her lamb. And we know that in our younger days, our parents pray for us, but the shepherd had us in his arms. That's love. And everything that God does for us is because of love. God's love is what motivates us. And that's the reason why we're here where we are today. Like the password that we use to secure our trusty electrical gadgets, Securing yourself and knowing that God's love is our motivation is what matters most. Securing yourself by knowing that it is his love that ultimately saves us from sinking sin. And it saves us and rescues us from drowning. It's his love that allows us to be kept carefully and safely close in his bosom. When the storms of life seem overwhelming, and we may seem weak. We know that his strong arm is wise protecting us. Oh, worthy is the Lamb of God. Because he allows us to be where we are today. So if you will, allow yourself to be lost sometimes. But allow yourself to be found by the love of God. Allow him to motivate you to live your life. To laugh and to love. And allow him to continue through this Advent season to let you remember that the Good Shepherd comes to make our lives great, to make our lives whole, and to make our lives more dependent on him. Let us learn to cling to him. And may we find that his unfailing love is where we put all of our hope and our trust in the love that motivates God. And as I come to a close with my message, understand that love is priceless. 
Love is supposed to be free. And love is the reason why we're all here today. When we're weak, it's because of God's love. When we cry and we feel like we're at our wit's end, it's because of God's love. And when we just walk outside and we see a stranger and they talk to us and they're entertaining us like angels do, it's because of God's love. And as it was sung this morning, it's because of God's grace yeah. that we made it to where we are. Yeah. Prayer is free. Yeah. Prayer is just a simple conversation with God. And we, we pray to him and ask him for forgiveness and we ask him to help us with things and get us over the hump to get to the next pay period, to get to the next retirement check, to get us to the next doctor's appointment. It's his love that sustains us. And it's his love that guides us and keeps us where we are. So don't be afraid of things that are happening in this world. God sees and knows all. Amen. We just have to pray. Yes. And we just have to pray that the love that God has will overcome this world. And that we can just walk this world, walk this community, walk this neighborhood, and these kids can go to school knowing that they're loved by Jesus. So with that being said, oh, how I love Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how we all love Jesus. Yeah. Oh, how we love Jesus because he first loved us. Amen. 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 Amen.